in spirit and in Everybody in the building ought to just stand and give God the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what praise is ringing down in you. It may be hallelujah. It may be Jesus, I love you. But take a moment and just give him the fruit of your lips. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. While you just worship him. Somebody's going to get a healing just while you worship him. Praise and take your seat at the time. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power 
Hallelujah. You know, at times like this, in moments like these, my mind go back in Scripture to Jacob fleeing from the presence of his brother Esau after having tricked him out of his birthright. And when he came to a certain place called Luz, lying with nothing but a stone for his pillow, and under the shade of an almond tree, because the name Luz meant almond, when he saw in a vision the ladder set up on earth and extending into heaven, he said as he saw angels ascending by way of the ladder, taking his prayers up and angels descending, bringing God's answer down. He said, truly, the Lord is in this place. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And when he woke up the next morning, he took his P-I-L-L-O-W that was a pillow. He stood it up right and turned it into a P-I-L-L-A-R. <laughs> Made it an altar. And changed the name of it from Luz to Bethel said this is nothing other than the gate of heaven it's the door of heaven it's Bethel the house of God the Lord is in this place thank you Lord we're coming back tonight 6.40 after YPWW and uh, Faith Clinic shall hold their meeting simultaneously at 5.30 and at 6.45 we will share our Lord's body and blood in Holy Communion. Some were with us at the 8 a.m. Communion. Uh, if you did not make it at that time, you have an opportunity to share tonight at 6.45. God bless all of our elders who are on the platform as well as those in the audience. Uh, bless your elder flag. I didn't see you over there earlier. And uh, so happy for all of these uh, great ministers and missionaries. Uh, I shall not uh, endeavor to be before you at any great length. It's been a busy time. And as you know, on yesterday, I was uh, highly honored. I was blessed to be at a commencement exercise such as nothing I'd ever seen on the campus of uh, Old Roberts University, uh, where I think something like 731 students were uh, graduated and received their uh, degrees. And I was uh, selected as one out of five, one being a U.S. Senator and uh, others in various capacities uh, to receive from ORU the Honorary Doctor of Divinity degree. And <laughs> I... Thank you. felt it, God bless you, thank you. I felt it a tremendous honor for so many reasons, one of them being the fact that uh, at my age now, on the top side of 50, I have seen so many parents work themselves to a frazzle to send their children to college. 
And after one semester of philosophy, they come back home either confused or come back believing that there is no God. And to go to a top-notch university where the standards are very high and see a university setting where with all of the pomp and circumstance and everyone marching in with their robes and hoods and caps and the um, particular tassel trying to distinguish their honors and their status and once everybody was in place and the officers of the university and the honorees we marched in and took the platform the first thing that started was quickly the praise and worship team came to the platform and started praise and worship a university designed to strengthen the faith of young people rather than destroy it I don't care what you say about that that's that's a great thing and it doesn't matter what people say and even while we were en route to Tulsa turned on one of these talk shows from Memphis uh, and there was a fella praising Billy Graham and down in old Roberts but whatever you think about old Roberts God used him to do something that will bless God-fearing young people who want to go to a university where their faith will be strengthened and not destroyed. And as I sat there yesterday, I, I tell you, it was just something magnificent, like something I've never seen before. Uh, but I really mentioned it for one reason. Uh, you've been calling me pastor, you've been calling me apostle, you've been calling me bishop, and don't you dare start calling me anything else. Because if you do start that doctor stuff, I'm going to act like I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> now, that's the reason I mentioned it. <laughs> but I also mentioned it because uh, when you're going through the suffering, you never know what God has in store on the glory side. I thought about it when our president of the United States uh, for the first time when he stood uh, in the halls of Congress, when he stood there uh, in the uh, area where Congress meets, the House of Representatives, to deliver his uh, State of the Union address. And as I sat there watching that on television, I said, now that's something. Before our present President Clinton ever had the privilege of standing where he's standing, I stood there before him. Because even in the Congress, they have the seat in the back right under the flag, but there is a podium right down on that second level that is only used by the chaplain of the House of Representatives, or by a guest chaplain, or by the president when delivering a joint message to the House of Representatives and the Senate uh, by some foreign dignitaries. And uh, I had the privilege back in uh, August, I believe it was, of 92, August 10th of 92, to stand in that place and to do the opening prayer in Congress and receive the, at the end of that day the flag that flew over the Capitol that day. And it's out in my office at the other location. And I look and I said, Lord, you've uh, given me so many honors. I mean, what's, what's going on? And you know, whenever God starts blessing, you start wondering, are you getting ready to leave here? <laughs> but then you also remember the scripture that said, if you suffer with him, <laughs> you reign with him. And there are some things that God does just as the reward of suffering. You know, you got a lot of folks, they want all the rewards, but they don't want to do any of the suffering. Now, I'm going to get to my message in a few minutes. Uh, 
And I looked, God did it. He, he did it on the, on the local level. And then he started doing it on the higher state level. And now I see some things that I have to suffer on the national level. I said, well, I guess God's given me another breakthrough. Uh, when he lifted me to the position of general board, there were those that were so happy. Oh, my God, Gilbert Patterson has come back to the organization and is a bishop in the church. And that was fine until I said, well, the Lord impressed me to run for general board. Then from the very top of the church, start hearing, anybody who's been out 13 years haven't got no business running for general board. And see, that, that will make me eventually tell the church the whole story of why I ended up out 13 years. But it's sad when church folk know politics and don't know the scripture. You know, when you know the scripture, you know that even Moses, before he could assume the position of leadership that God had granted him, he had to leave his home, huh? which was in Egypt, and go into Midian until God kept him there 40 years to prepare him. Then he sent him back. And Saul of Tarsus, when God converted him on the road to Damascus, he sent him to Arabia three years, and then he came back as the Apostle Paul. Have you ever read the story of David? David was anointed three times. The first time in 1 Samuel chapter 16 in the presence of his brothers. The next time in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 2, uh, he received the second anointing, which made him king over the tribe of Judah. But in the fifth chapter of 2 Samuel, he received his third anointing that made him king over all Israel. But at one point between those anointings, David had to leave Israel and go into the enemy camp to the Philistine city of Aphex and had to stay under the protection of Achis, a Philistine king, in order to save him from the king of Israel that was seeking his life. And it's sad when conditions can exist in church circles. Hello. That a person would have to leave their own denomination in order to be preserved from the king that's trying to kill you. That's sad. But when you read the scripture, you know the movements of God. That's why when I see stuff that get everybody else all disturbed and upset, the Lord always gives me an example from scripture. And other folk are looking for an example in politics and how I fee see it and what I think about it. Folk, let me tell you, there's no substitute for this book. When you know the Word of God, when you really get into it and understand God's plan not only in the book itself, but, but what is the word that uh, Brother Hagen uses all the time? Rhema. See, the logos is the word. But when that word becomes personalized to you, it becomes a rhema word. And you got to not only know the book, but you got to know what God is saying out of the book to you. And once you find out what he's saying out of the book to you, folk can dig ditches. They can lie on you. They can set traps. And you don't do anything but sit there and wait for God's plan to be revealed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you can get into the part that says we know that all things, that's not only the hugs and the kisses, but the frowns and the getting cussed out. That's not only the laughter, but it's the tears. It's not only the sunshine, it's the rain. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's not only the sweet, it's the bitter. When you know what God is saying to you, then you know that all things. 
touch somebody and tell them are not good but all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose <laughs> oh glory you ought to reach over and ask them do you know God's got a purpose for your life well if so quit worrying about what's happening it's working for your good I might preach after a while, but I feel something here yet. As people of God, you're going to have to quit letting circumstances cause you to walk around looking and acting and talking defeated. You just don't know what they do to me. You, you just don't know. You, my God, it doesn't matter what the devil is trying to do to you. Ask yourself, what is God doing for me? As long as God is doing something for me, I can take what the devil is doing to me. Now, is there anybody in here, I mean, you're going through something, and, and I mean, you want to really accept that today? Then turn to somebody and tell them that. As long as God is doing something for me, I can take what the devil is trying to do to me. I listened that the music from the, the women's choir today and praise God that one song Sister Modera and the trio was leading uh, I've had Brother Chambers and uh, some of the uh, radio personalities at our station to play that song for me I think that's the one by one the Nero Butler take me higher and 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 uh, see when you got something where you got a desire to go higher in God. See, for a long time, I stopped, I stopped riding airplanes, and they put it out all over the country. Gilbert Patterson was scared to ride the airplane, but what folk didn't know is when I got in those airplanes, I would get so high in there, and then my sinuses would start draining into my ears, and I'd end up walking around with fluid in my ears and couldn't hear. In fact, this, this right ear here now is about half, has half the hearing that the left one has because of that constant thing of fluid until I had to get something that kind of dried out my sinuses so I could fly, you know, because now my schedule demands I've got to fly. And, and, and when you go higher, a lot of things start happening. You know, ears may do a little popping and 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 and, and uh, you, you get up and you're going up 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 and and I, I heard the story about the time when uh, there was some cargo that was on the same level with the passengers and they said that they discovered as one of those crates opened that there were some dangerous snakes and when the when the pilot heard what was happening and transferred back to the you know to the ground control and said, you got some snakes on board. We, we, we don't know what to do. Will you clear us the land? I said, uh-uh. Can't clear you the land, because if you land, the snake may get you. But there's an altitude where the snake can't live. So in, instead of coming down, turn the nose of that jet toward heaven. And, and go a little higher and you keep on going higher hallelujah touch somebody and ask him is that snake the devil giving you trouble turn your nose toward heaven and climb a little higher I declare you can go so high 
until the snake can't live. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That, that, that's not... That, that's not a new... It may be a new song, but it's not a new spiritual truth. The hymn knowledge just wrote <laughs> years ago, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. But you know, there's another verse. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Tell somebody you can stay down here with the snakes if you want to, but I'm going high. mean that? Do you really want him to take you? Going higher sometimes not only takes fasting and takes prayer and takes praise in God, but every time you get ready to go higher, you're going to meet some obstacles. Tell somebody, when you ask Lord to take you higher, you're also asking him for some more trouble. Now, somebody said, Preacher, what you mean? Asking for more trouble. You get into that uh, sixth chapter of Ephesians, and he says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. And understand, these are the ranks of Satan's kingdom. When you start going higher, the first thing you're going to bump your head against is that lower rank of demons called principalities. But when you break through and you think you got smooth sailing, you say, Lord, take me higher. After principalities, you're going to meet another rank. It's called powers. When you break through that one, you may have smooth sailing a few days. But you say, Lord, take me higher. You start up again and boom, you hit more obstruction. What's that? That's the rulers of the darkness of this world. You find the struggle and fast and pray and praise your way through the rulers of the darkness of this world. And my God, you know you're going on now. But then you get into, uh, uh, you know, when you're flying and you start getting into that turbulence, and sometimes they can't go over it, they can't go around it, they try to come under it, and then they just have to bump it on through. You're about to really go through the wall now because now you're up against spiritual wickedness in high places. But oh, if you keep going higher, I got news for you. You can make it if you determine I'm going higher. Glory to God. Glory to God. Folks, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I got up. I got up to preach, Wilt Thou Be Made Whole? I've been spending all morning making notes on that. But, but somehow the Holy Ghost went another way. And, 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 and I just got a feeling that somebody in here, my God, you, you, you've been trapped. Trapped by the enemy. I, I got a, 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 a note when I walked in the door. Somebody requesting special prayer. And a preacher up here was telling me about a, a daughter and, and problems of cocaine. 
and, and the devil is just trying to whip you to a frazzle. He's using children. He's using spouses. He's using them being chemically addicted. He's using sickness to wear you down and look like pull you down into a grave. But I'm here to tell you that if you recognize that no matter what you're in, Jesus is in it with you. Hallelujah. You can pull out the throttle. You can thrust full speed ahead and you can make it. I don't care what you're going through. Tell somebody Jesus didn't tell you that you wouldn't go through. But he did tell you I'll be with you. And if Jesus go with me, I'll go anywhere through anything. All I got to know is that I'm not by myself. of the day this is an unusual day but it's a day of praising and those of you that feel like the enemy has defeated you you better praise him more than anybody trouble in your home you better praise God no matter what's going on you better praise him praise him until you make the devil mad tell the devil devil you're not gonna stop me you don't belong nowhere but under my feet get down where you belong. I'm going to praise my God no matter what's happening in my life. Give him glory. Give him praise. All of you ordained elders that are recognized as ordained elders, I want you to spread. And you people can just come 
in each section. Come praising God. And don't go back to your seat till one of them lay hands on you. I need two of you in the balcony. Hallelujah. Keep on praising. side and you two on this side and you on this side you can come and go that way you on this side can come and go the other way come on come on come on the elders are just gonna lay hands on you
to God. Oh, we bless God today. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, glory to God. He just a wonder all by himself. Oh, we give him the glory. We give him the praises. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, we thank God. The Lord knows exactly what his people need. Amen. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. And we don't care about him being mad. Glory to God. Oh, we praise God today. Thank God for the man of God. You may have your seat. The Lord led an unusual way on today. Hallelujah. When praises go up, blessings come down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we praise God today for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God knows exactly what we need. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. We thank God. We thank God. God has done some wonders in our midst on today. But praise the Lord, we wouldn't dare close this service without giving you a sinner, a backslider, to come back to the Lord. This is your day to come back. Hallelujah. You may not have this opportunity again, but this is your hour, this is your time to come and give your life to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Backslider, Santa, you want to come back home. Glory to God. God bless you, Lee. God bless you, my dear. There's the other need to come. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name. Ha! Oh, bless the home of your sire. Bless the home of your now see. Bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is waiting on you. We are waiting on you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If I were you, I'd get up. I would get up. I wouldn't go out of this place today unless I knew the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If I were you, I wouldn't leave out this building today. If I was in my sin, I would get up right now. Hallelujah to God. And come. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, young man. I would leave out this place today. Hallelujah. If I didn't know Jesus Christ, this God that we are shouting, this God that we are praising today, hallelujah. He's ready right now to forgive you of every sin that you have committed. All you got to do is just have the boldness to get up and come down here right now. Pray the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is waiting on you and we are waiting on you. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If I were you, I wouldn't leave out this place. Nuh-uh. You can go home another way. Glory to God. In the balcony, west wing, on the main level. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord giving you this chance. You may not have this chance anymore. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. God bless you, young man. God bless you. God bless you. Is there some more? I know there's some more. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You in the back there, we wait on you. All you got to do is just punch one and come on down. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, young man. God bless you. Oh, we thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God didn't send all this apartness and knowing down for nothing. God bless you too, young ladies. God bless you, young lady. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's worthy of all the praises. Hallelujah. Oh, we give him the glory. Come all right, young men. Come on. Praise the Lord. Three from in the balcony. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Saint. Praise the Lord. Praise 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. to God. You already say it. Want to make this your church home. All you got to do is just get up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you, young lady. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Wonderful Jesus. the Lord. Oh, we thank God. We thank God for these souls. All right, there come another one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just keep on coming. Hey, bless the Lord. Pray. My God, my God. Praise the Lord. Oh, we thank God for these souls. Is that another one? We got time to wait on you. Praise the Lord. Heaven and rejoice in the day. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, my brother. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The door is open. Come on, come on, give your life to Jesus today. There'll never be better time than now. Oh, now is the time to believe him. Now is the time to receive him. Today is the day of salvation. There will never be better time than now. <laughs> oh, now. Hallelujah. time. If you're in the balcony, go to the elevator. Push one. Come on down. In the west wing. Get up. Step in the nearest aisle. Get out here in front of me. Get up. Come on. Better time than now. Oh, you can say what you want to. I don't know that I'm, I'm full to overflowing today to see these souls, young men, young ladies. All right, Brother Kirkendall, this is your day. <laughs> well, praise God. Better time. Maybe you're already saved, but you know this is where God wants you to be. Why keep trying to run away from it? Hallelujah. Other folk don't have nothing but your name, no how. So you may as well come on. Hallelujah. This is where God wants you to be and you know it. So why put it off any longer? Hallelujah. The door is open. If you're already saved and want to make this your church, in the wing, get up. Out here in front of me, in the balcony. All you got to do is get up and walk down the nearest aisle with this tremendous host of souls that's here right now. I yet sense in my spirit that God is talking to somebody else even now. Already saved, but you want to make this your church. Why don't you get on up and come? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now 
is the time to receive him. Now is the time. That's right, young lady. Come on. There will never be better time than now. Now I'm just going to step down and shake hands with each one of you. You're going to follow Superintendent Siggers and L. Freeman. If any one of you yet have a question in your mind as to what must I do to be saved, the Bible will be open, and you'll get your answer right out of the Scripture. And saints, I, I, I trust that you all will, will get that built into your spirit. When the question is asked, what must I do to be saved? The answer is a spiritual answer that comes out of the Scripture. The answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The answer, Father says, with the heart man believeth, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is sad that in the Pentecostal experience, and I preached that not too long ago, salvation is an inside job. And we in the Pentecostal experience got so hung up on outside things on the wearing of jewelry, on the length of a dress, on whether a woman wears pants. That doesn't have a thing to do with salvation. Nowhere in the New Testament where salvation is preached. But we let somebody hang us up on some stuff in the Old Testament that haven't got nothing to do with the New Testament church. And again, I say to you, Deuteronomy 22 and 5 does say, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. But it haven't got nothing to do with pants, because there wasn't no pants then. And if you're going to try to take the fifth verse of the 22nd chapter and send women to hell who wear pants, keep reading till you get to verse 11, and you'll send all of us to hell. Just like it said, a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to the man, neither shall the man put on a woman's garment. It also said, thou shall not wear garments of diverse sorts, such as woolen and linen together. I don't believe I'm looking at nobody in here that's wearing all of one fabric. And if Deuteronomy 22 and 5 is talking to us, then everybody in here is going to hell for having on two kinds of fabrics. You cannot tell me verse 5 is in effect and verse 11 is not. You're not going to ever go higher to where God wants you to be until you break free of this traditionalism and legalism and find out what God's Word has to say. And don't take things that don't have nothing to do with salvation and try to make them salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, y'all can get all upset and go to those churches where they teach all of the traditions and all of the isms and all of the legalisms, but I guarantee you, you'll wonder why you don't get a harvest of souls. And so the preacher will come, but well, you see, I preach too strict. No, you preach too crazy. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ is simple, plain, easy to be understood. And the answer they'll get will be scriptural answers. And when the preachers get through giving them God's answer, don't y'all come, let them come back and you give them your answer. Hey man, y'all. Now you should have shouted enough to be able to stand this. God bless you, young lady. Go follow the singers. Follow the others. Now, if any of you ladies 
left your purse and you didn't leave it with somebody responsible, then go back and get it. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you, young fella. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Oh, this is beautiful to me. Look at these young men. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you, huh? So happy for you. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. God bless you. God bless your heart. Man, like, son, I sung the song. Come up there. Uh, praise the Lord. Lady, lady, I've been praying for him to come to the Lord. Isn't I'm that saying wonderful? I'm a member here. All right. Thank God. Well, see, she just walked up here because she saw her son come to the Lord. Now, you can say what you want to. Your young men and ladies may be hung up in those streets, but don't you give up. Hello, y'all. They may be hung up on cocaine and crack. They may be so far gone until you feel like, oh my God, why did I bring them in this world? But I'm here to tell you, don't give up on them. Hold on by faith. Weeping may endure for a night. And some nights are longer than others. Hello, y'all. Yeah. But joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we can be so entrenched in some things. I remember when Temple of Deliverance first opened, how many of you all were here? March 2nd, 1975. Something that I remember saying in that message, I remember saying to the people that the Lord had brought me to a point of unlearning everything that I had ever learned to get into the scriptures and learn Jesus Christ afresh. Some of us have chains on our mind that's so tight that even when the Lord tries to show you light, you won't let it in. You'll go to your grave forever believing your traditions more than you believe the word. Hello. All of our traditions were not wrong, but so many of them were. It's a sin to go to the movie. You go to the movie, you're going to hell. And then around 1948, what happened? Television. And all them same movies that they told you would send you to hell. Now you're sitting up with the Bible on the coffee table getting dust and your feet propped up looking at that movie that was going to send you to hell. You know I'm telling the truth. And some of the evangelists in those days and some of them tough pastors had one-eyed demon television. So sin to have it in your house. And finally, after everybody else got it, Rev went and got him one. <laughs> when you really get saved, don't nobody have to give you a list of do's and don'ts. It's not an outside thing. It's an inside job. Hmm? And then when the inside gets right, then you start saying, something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. 
something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change. I, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting. I didn't get up here to preach another sermon. But see, if you don't have that something on the inside that works on the outside, I've, I've seen I've seen women with short dresses, with jewelry, with makeup that had principle, and a man couldn't make them do nothing. And ever since that been holding this church, there have been sisters with long dresses and long sleeves and no makeup. And all you got to do is get them away from the folk and behind closed doors. But it don't matter what you got on if you got that something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, something on the inside, working on the outside. Ooh, what a change. Yeah. Now, the missionaries are going to meet that president right here. Anybody else got a meeting? No brother meeting, no meeting of the sisters. All right. The whole sisters. The whole sisters, they'll be working.